In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Even in our loneliness, we know of the presence of the Spirit in our midst. For the times in which we fail to invoke God, asking his mercy, we now pause and ask for his loving forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them on the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father. And you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. The pastor deserves a raise. I mean, I've got to read the readings at Mass and do everything by myself. I'm I'm jockeying for a raise, I think, in the midst of the coronavirus. But regardless, it's good to have many of you back here, many of you for the first time, uh, to be able to celebrate Mass. Uh, As I told the congregation earlier, if you want to sign up for as many weekday Masses right now as you'd like to, please feel free to. Uh, We'd love to have as many people join us for worship as is possible in the midst of all of these directives. You probably know if you're registered, and if you're not registered, or if you never got a phone call, well, shame on you, but myself and my staff for the past six weeks have been calling all of our parishioners, 900 and something phone calls a week. And it's interesting to watch the reactions of our parishioners uh, whenever we make those phone calls. For example, when Shirley or Lucy call, they get one particular reaction, but when I call, it's like, oh... Why is Father calling me right now? Am I in trouble? What did I do? Or maybe it's, oh, he's asking for money yet again. Or for some people, it was just the sense of sort of being overwhelmed that people were actually checking on him to see how things were going. But one of the parishioners I called, and I had various interesting conversations, uh, this parishioner asked me, Father, do you think God is in the middle of all of this? It's an interesting theological question for us to be able to ask ourselves. And have there ever been times in your life where you simply looked and said, where is God? Is God really here? It's interesting because that particular question will be one that we will reflect upon some dioceses in the United States two days from now. Uh, In our own diocese, it will actually happen on Sunday with the Feast of the Ascension. Where is Jesus, and what does that physically look like? But the question of loneliness and abandonment really come front and center when you listen to today's scripture readings. Don't you think Paul and Silas struggle with that very same question? Here they are proclaiming the good news of God, yet where are they at? Literally rotting away in a prison. And the Acts of the Apostles does a really good job giving the descriptors They're chained to a stake, like you would see some dog chained out in the middle of the yard. Actually, nowadays, we wouldn't even treat our animals the exact same way. But yet, here are two men filled with fire, filled with zeal, ready to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And where are they? In prison. Imagine if you were that zealous about proclaiming the gospel. Suddenly, you find yourself in captivity. Surely, somewhere along the way, you have to ask yourself, is God here? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Where is God in the midst of this? Fortunately, in the first reading, though, we start to see the evolution of what happens. From great earthquakes to the conversion of even the soldier that's at the prison, you start to see that God is present, even in the midst of darkness, even in the times and the places that you and I might never expect. And I'm sure that's exactly what gave Paul and Silas that opportunity to continue to struggle, to continue to be faithful, and to continue to have that fight to proclaim the good news with the zeal that was so characteristic of those early apostles. In the gospel, that ultimately ends up being a struggle that we find in the early church too. Every different gospel is written for a particular different community, and John's gospel is likely the last of the four that's actually written. Who is he writing for? People who have faith in Christ, but at a certain point, they start to flounder in their faith. And what do they do? They revert back to the old ways. 
They go back to their Jewish roots and say, you know what? Things are just as comfortable here. Why do I want to be a Christian? Why do I want to be persecuted? Is God really in the midst of all of this strife and struggle? It's really the question, I think, theologically, that's at the forefront of many people's minds, especially with what's going on out there. Listening to those phone calls, we hear the problems of economic struggle. Folks who are losing their jobs, not knowing how they're going to pay the mortgage, whether or not they're going to be able to send their children to Catholic school. They're the people who actually have the virus, yet family members can't go and sit at the bedside or hold their loved one's hands for the repercussion and the fear of what might happen to them. And in the middle of all that, we tend to ask ourselves, can God really be here? Is God really present in the midst of all of this? Maybe a little story might be able to help. I, I never really feared my grandfather. He was one of those old men. He had a lot of bark but no bite about him. He was kind of a loving man underneath it all. My dad was the exact opposite. He had no bark, but when he bit, get out the way. And I remember we used to go fishing together. So one day we went fishing, and I had his favorite lure on my fishing pole. Well, guess who ended up tying the wonderful lure upon the line? Yours truly, except I didn't do the knot correctly or something happened. And when I cast it, oh, there went the line and there went the bait, never to be found anywhere again. So, of course, I thought, well, holy hell is about to break loose, right? I'm going to get torn up from one side to another. My days of fishing are absolutely over. That's what the expectation was. But the old man, who usually had a lot more bite than bark, he said, oh, you know what, I guess I just didn't secure it the way that I was supposed to on your line. And I'm thinking, are you blind? I'm the one that actually did this. I'm the one that got rid of the thing. I was waiting to get my rear end tore up so bad, but there was none of that. It was a way of actually teaching his son, uh, maybe there are some things that are more important and some things that are less so. In the middle of that was an opportunity to see that God works even in our fear, that God works even in our darkness. And actually, maybe that's the irony of the gospel. God is often most present, not in the times of consolation, it's in the times of desolation, the times of darkness. That's when we really can see the hand of God at work. Is God in the midst of this coronavirus stuff? You betcha. Our church looks a little weird right now. It's weird celebrating Mass to a camera, not having you guys in here. But was the church present? Oh, you better believe it. Folks are watching religiously. Pastors worry about their collections all the time. I was joking with Miss Shirley. We might not have Mass anymore because I think our collections are better without having people in the church. Look at the people of Goodwill. We're actually doing food drops this morning with the food bank to help our people uh, who are struggling and suffering a little bit more. Where's God? He's right in the middle of it all, right in the midst of the struggle. And perhaps our prayer should be to have the zeal to continue to preach the good news, even in the darkness. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, let's ask God for the grace and the courage, whatever darkness that we experience to look for God most pronounced, because there he is in the midst of all of our darkness. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. For all of those who are in prison or who perhaps are martyred for the faith, that we might follow their example of zeal and courage and proclaim the good news to all we encounter. We pray to the Lord. For the times in which we encounter darkness, we doubt our faith, we don't put our trust in God, that we might look for the presence of the Lord even in the midst of our struggle. We pray to the Lord. For those who are impacted economically by the coronavirus, that they might come to full healing, by the charity and generosity of the brothers and sisters of our church, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and for those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers, the petition, and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts.
may we be reassured by your presence in the darkness, O God, as we await the coming of the Spirit. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in the present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we made a couple of announcements this weekend, we will be putting our new sign-up sheet for this coming weekend and week. Just remember, if you'd like to come to Mass, you have to sign up. We ask that you only sign up for one weekend Mass, but you can sign up for multiple weekday Masses if you'd like in the meantime until we figure this all out. And I joke about stewardship, but thank you for your financial stewardship, your generosity, and helping to continue to work out all the kinks so that we can do new and different ministry, even if it is virtual, especially in this time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.